Good morning, Wolfpack, and welcome to today's lesson on angle pairs. This is going to be broken up into two portions, and the first portion is your homework. The second portion will be something that you do in uh, class or for homework if you are absent. So let's go ahead and get started. Our essential question continues to be, how can theorems help prove problems? Let's move right into our notes. A transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two different points. As you can see, I've highlighted T. That's the transversal. It's intersecting those other two lines. And when that transversal intersects, <coughs> excuse me, two lines, it forms pairs of angles. And those angles have different relationships. First up, we have corresponding angles. Corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal and on the corresponding sides of the intersected lines. Okay. So for example, um, angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles because they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both above the transversal. And then they are on the corresponding sides of the intersected lines. They're both to the left of the intersected lines. Okay, so those are corresponding angles. Next up, we have same side interior angles. And they lie on the same side of the transversal. Sorry, this line should not be there and they are between the intersected lines. So for example, 3 and 8 are same side interior. They're on the same side of the transversal. They're both below the transversal, and they're between those intersected lines. I'm going to highlight those intersected lines. Okay, these are my intersected lines. Uh, 3 and 8 are between them. Okay. Our next one are alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are non-adjacent angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. Opposite, aka alternate. And they are be also between the intersect lines. Example of this would be uh, 2 and 8. So 2 and 8, they're on opposite sides of the transversal. 2 is above the transversal. 8 is below the transversal. But they're both between the intersected lines. Last up, we have alternate exterior angles. And they lie on opposite sides of the transversal. But they are outside the intersected lines. And an example of this would be 4 and 6. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. 4 is below the transversal. 6 is above the transversal. And they are both outside the intersected lines. So those are four types of angle pairs. And those are uh, pairs that you're going to have to become really, really, really familiar with because we will see them over and over and over again. So that's a transversal that's intersecting two lines. But when those two lines are parallel, things change. Parallel lines are lines that lie in the same plane and they never intersect. And in this figure right here, okay, um, L is parallel to M. Okay, so that's how, and notice this is how they're notated, they're parallel. The single arrow means that they're parallel to each other. So those two lines, L and M, are parallel to each other. Okay? And when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, something special results. The angle pairs that are formed are either congruent, they're equal to each other, and congruent symbol is an equal sign with a tilde on top of it, or the angle pairs are supplementary. And in geometry this year, we'll be setting up a lot of things um, that either are equal to each other or that add up to 180. So they're either congruent or they're supplementary. 
And this is only if the two lines are parallel. The corresponding angle theorem says, if two lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles have the same measure. Okay, they are congruent to each other. So, oops, sorry, I just highlighted the wrong one. Skipped. Sorry, corresponding angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles have the same measure up here. So my corresponding angles, 2 and 6, they're both on the right side of the transversal. They're both uh, above their intersected line. They're in corresponding spots. These lines are parallel to each other because they have the arrow. That means 2 and 6 are equal to each other. They have the same measure. The alternate interior angles theorem says if two lines are two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles have the same measure again. And this is a word that you should be filling in. So four and five are alternate interior. They're inside those parallel lines. They're alternate. They're on the opposite sides of the transversal. They are also equal to each other. The alternate exterior angle theorem says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate exterior angles also have the same measure. So one and eight, alternate exterior, they're on opposite sides of the transversal. They're outside of the line, so they are exterior. They also have the same measure. The last one is same side interior. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of same side interior angles are supplementary. Three and five, they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both to the left of the transversal, and they're inside the two parallel lines. They're same side interior. Those two angles are not equal to each other, but they add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. Let's do some practice. Identify all pairs of these angles. So all pairs of corresponding angles. Okay, so think about it as this is a set of four angles and this is a set of four angles, okay? So angle one is corresponding to angle five. Angle two is corresponding to angle six. Okay, you should be able to do the last two pairs on your own. Look at angle four. What is angle four corresponding with in that second pair? Angle four is corresponding with angle eight. And then you have angle three and angle seven. So those are your four pairs of corresponding angles. Now, our next step is alternate interior angles. You should have two pairs of alternate interior angles. So angle four, what angle is alternate but still inside? Alternate means the opposite side, so that would be three and six, right? So alternate interior, so four and six. The other ones would be angle three and angle five. These are alternate interior. They're inside, but they're on opposite sides. Next, we have alternate exterior. Exterior means outside. So angle one is outside. Its alternate would be angle seven on the other side of transversal. And then angle two is on the outside. Its alternate would be angle eight. Okay, alternate, opposite, exterior, outside. Letter D, same side interior angles. Same side, they're on the same side of the transversal. Interior, that means they're inside. So angle four and angle five, they're both on the left side of the transversal. And then angle three and six are both on the right side of the transversal. Those are same side interior angles. So when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, you end up with four pairs of corresponding angles, two pairs of alternate interior angles, 
two pairs of alternate exterior angles and two pairs of same side interior angles. Okay, so 10 pairs of angles that we can identify if we have two lines cut by a transversal. Same side interior angles, they're also called consecutive. You might see that word as well. And this is just going to come with practice, being able to identify this. Let's do two examples and then we will be done. Example two, find the value of x. Well, first thing I have to do is look at what the picture is giving me. I see that the lines are parallel to each other and they're being cut by a transversal. So I have an angle here and an angle here. What pair is that? Well, they're both inside the parallel lines. Right? They're both inside the parallel lines. They're between it. So they're either alternate interior or same side. Well, I can tell that they are on the same side of the transversal. They're both to the right of the transversal. And if you look at your notes, it says same side interior angles are supplementary. That means they add up to 180 degrees. And that means that this angle, 3x plus 17, when I add it to 5x plus 11, it equals 180. They're supplementary. The two angles together have to make 180. So we're going to solve for x. 3x plus 5x is 8x. 17 plus 11 is 28. 180. Equals 180. Now we're going to subtract and divide. 8x equals 152. x equals 14. As simple as that. Now, if you go back and you plug x into both of these, and then you add up the two angles, they should add up to 180 degrees. And if they don't, we have done something wrong. One more. Example B, finding x. We need to look at what the problem, the picture shows us. I see that these two lines are parallel to each other. Okay, so then I have this angle and this angle. And think about what kind of angles they are. I know they're not same side interior because they're not inside the parallel lines. They're not um, alternate interior. They're not corresponding because they're not the same position. They're alternate exterior. They're outside and one is above the transversal and one is below the transversal. And our notes told us that alternate exterior angles are congruent to each other. So 113 equals 3x minus 4. And then we can easily solve for x um, to, in this problem. Add 4 to both sides. 117 equals 3x. Divide by 3. You get 39. Okay, it's as simple as that. The biggest thing, though, is going to remember whether they are corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, or same side. Corresponding alternate interior and alternate exterior, they're all congruent to each other if their lines are parallel. Same side interior, they're the ones that add up to 180 degrees. So knowing those two pieces of information, we can solve for almost any angle in a pair. We're going to stop right there. Hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. Please make sure this is done before you come into class. Have a great day, Wolfpack.